Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's October 13th, 2013. Um, remember that verse in Isaiah 6, verse 8 says, Here am I, Lord, send me. I want to talk to you about that this week. <laughs> when we're saved and filled with God's Spirit, there's a very natural desire in our hearts to please the Father. When we are new in the Lord, we want to serve Him and obey Him. <clears throat> and as we mature, our initiatives become more kingly and they come more from conversations with the Father. And we don't just talk to God in prayer, but we hear Him speak to us. Um, and we operate more out of the desires of our own hearts. We no longer think of ourselves just as servants, but we see ourselves as sons and kings ruling and reigning with Jesus. Listen to John 15, verse 15 and 16. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. So, let me give you a little before and after story <coughs> from my own history. <laughs> for one or two decades in my 20s and 30s as a young believer, I would have desires and things I wanted to do in the church I was in for God. I would always take those requests to a man for confirmation, and more often those requests would come to me out of someone else's initiatives, and I would never trust the desire of my own heart. It was far too independent to do that, and I didn't want to be a quote-unquote lone ranger. <laughs> so after 16 years in the same church, we decided to plant a church, and again I took my initiative to the pastor and his oversight to gain all the necessary approvals, and it took a year just to make the decision. And I made it hard because I hadn't given myself permission to volunteer for the desires of my own heart. And that's a sort of an essential foundation stone for operating in the kingdom. In hindsight, I realized that my obedience was rooted in my own identity as a servant and my commitment to be loyal and please men whom I saw as my spiritual sup superiors. But God was patient with me and I'm summarizing 40 years of theological development. <laughs> and I've learned that in the kingdom, our relationship with the Father is much more conversational. And he asks each one of us a question that we must answer. And that question is, what would you like to do? <laughs> it seems simple, but I didn't have a theological paradigm to hear that question, let alone provide an answer. <clears throat> so now I hear it very clearly. And my heart leaps to imagine and see great things God is doing through kings. And I'm fully willing to volunteer to do things that only God can accomplish. This is Isaiah 60, 6 verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. <laughs> so let's talk about leadership. This concept of initiative and volunteering to be sent not only change our relationship with the Father, it changes the way we lead people as well. Traditional leadership is identifying some great initiative and then finding those who will submit to the importance of it and come into the employ of it with their talents as servants, usually in exchange for a salary. This concept can work, but it's kind of like a time bomb because it ignores what God has written on the hearts of those employees. Great leaders realize that everyone else is called to be a leader in their own Mitron as well. And if that's true, then our first question to them has to be the same as God's first question to us. What's the desire of your heart? Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, The purposes of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. Neither corporations nor the church fully grasp this kingdom concept. There is really no such thing as an employee. We were all created to be sons and kings and rule and reign with him, and we're all created to work in exactly the sphere of life where our hearts and the Father's heart overlap. We will often find ourselves working with teams of people. The stability of those relationships is always driven by the overlap in the desires of individual hearts. We simply cannot pay for or employ a man's heart. And the corollary is also true. If we do not have a man's heart or understand what's in his heart, he or she will never produce fruit at the level God intends. So when you think about a corporation or a church or a ministry or 
any kind of scenario where you're working with another people, you don't have their full efficiency until you understand what's in their heart and until they um, embrace the desires of their own heart by working together with you. So let's talk about practical applications. I work with and minister with individuals and teams, we all do. My rule of thumb before committing to an initiative is a heart plan. And there's a, on our coaching page on our website, you can read all about that. It's simply a way to get at the desires of my own heart or <clears throat> understand the desires of another person's heart. So I want to see what God has written on the hearts of other people and I want to understand the depths of my own heart and I want to get it on a piece of paper. <laughs> Contracts are necessary but superficial because they only deal with the surface actions and the cash flow. Working and ministry relationships need something much deeper to have any longevity and that's what's in that person's heart and does it overlap with what God's heart is saying and, and what's in my heart. So, for example, I'm going to the Netherlands and Poland with John Hagen in a month. He's a friend from Texas. We have actually never met in person and we'll be spending time together in fellowship and conferences and listening to one another snore as we stay in the guest rooms of friends. He has never attended a Releasing Kings conference and I've never heard him speak. Does it sound like a risk? Well, it's really not because I coached John about a year ago and I respect him greatly. He knows all the details of my own heart plan and I've helped him develop his so I know all the details of his heart plan. There just aren't any surprises left. Our hearts are totally overlapped regarding this trip and I can already feel the power of our heart's agreement and in the miracles that will occur in others through that power. Listen to Matthew 18 verse 19. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. So it's really uh, the power of three hearts overlapping, John's, mine, and God's. And that's a, that's a perpetual or perennial truth, an eternal truth. So what does it feel like? There's the, a third dimension in this agreement for Europe with John Hagen, and that's that our Father agrees too. Feeling the heart of, a, of the Father for an initiative and a people is a source of amazing prophetic anointing and apostolic authority. We f will feel carried on eagles' wings when we get over there. I already do. My heart is already leaping, and yet I the overwhelming emotion we feel when that when this curtain is pulled back is is love for the father and, a, and an amazing love for his people they uh those who uh, we we touch or come to the conferences often remark how much love they feel when we give them the father's permission to dream and pursue the desire he's put in their hearts it's a jailbreak of liberty it's like an invitation to the father's supper a party it's healing, it's tears and joy at the same time. Words are really inadequate to describe the experience. We are simply inviting people to taste and see for themselves. Psalm 34 verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. You also have an invitation into your own Mitron and the destiny from your Father in heaven. I want to encourage you to hear the question and volunteer for something great by simply saying, Here am I, Lord. Send me. That's my prayer. And uh, so I'm encouraging you to, to also be in prayer for us for this um, trip to the Netherlands and Poland. We're doing conferences. We've got friends coming. We're going to see uh, people that got saved at previous conferences. Um, it's really going to be a lot of fun. And we're just trusting the Lord to do some great things while we're over there. Uh, we're gone from October 29th to November 12th. Amen. Talk to you next week. God bless.